am a rotten bastard. I admit it. But I'll tell you something. Even though I got a lot of hate inside, I got some friends who ain't got hate inside. They're filled with nothing but love. Their only crime is smoking a little grass and getting high, looking at the stars at night. All right, welcome to Chill Time with Steve and Chris. I'm Steve. I'm Chris. And we are uh, going to talk some USC this time because there's quite a bit going on in the news and we haven't spoken in a while and we haven't spoken USC in a while. So uh, I wanted to start with uh, Pat Healy. Do you know who that is? Yeah. He fought Jim Miller yeah. a couple of cards ago. Really good fight. Amazing. Got fight of the night. Got yeah. submission of the night. Made like 130 grand, I think, in bonuses. I don't know. Yeah, because it was 65 each. Okay. So he made 130 grand in bonuses. Lost every bit of it because he decided to smoke a joint. Yeah, you were we that. have talked about yeah, this. Yeah, you talked about it briefly. Yeah, so a lot of people are bitching, saying he shouldn't have lost all the bonuses. I look at it as rules are fucking rules. You know, everybody likes a good joint once in a while, but if you have a job that you can't do it, you can't do it. Well, Dana White was interviewed, and he finally spoke out about it. All right. And I read about it. Oh, I know what he said. Cause... Oh, dude, it was fucking hilarious. He just started freaking out, like, like just swearing us off. I'll read you a couple of quotes. But, like, the stuff he's saying is right, you know, and he, and he, and he is honest about it. He's like, these are the fucking rules. <laughs> whether it's TRT, didn't get an exemption, whether it's steroids, diuretics, whether it's pain pills, there's things that are banned substances, whether you like it or not. Marijuana is one of them. Somebody they, And somebody said they took 90% of his purse. We didn't take fucking zero from his purse. We took 100% of the bonuses that he wasn't eligible for because it got called a no contest, right. you know? Which is technically right, you know? And like, I mean, and I know everybody's like, oh, that sucks. It's like, yeah, it does suck. Because, you know, whether he smoked pot or not, he looked great. You know, he did fantastic. So White goes on to say, because White's awesome, it's fucking illegal. <laughs> you can't do it. It's a banned substance. Should it be? I don't necessarily think so. I don't think it's performance enhancing, he declared, his voice rising, because <laughs> he's fucking sped up. But it, it doesn't give a shit what I think. It doesn't matter. It's a banned substance. <laughs> Everybody, every fighter knows that you go in and you use marijuana and you get caught, you're busted. Now the commission is going to come in. They took that fight away from him and he's going to get fined by the commission. He wasn't eligible for that bonus. And then he talks about the guy who did get the bonus. Did you hear about that? That Brian Caraway yeah, guy? told me. I know nobody likes Brian Caraway, right? Brian Caraway, they don't like him. Boo, Brian Caraway. Caraway, Brian Caraway followed the rules. He had a submission that night, He f and he followed the rules. He absolutely 100% deserves that bonus. What would it say if I gave that kid $130,000 for testing positive for marijuana and the guy who followed the rules doesn't get it? How does that make sense? And, I mean, he's got a point he does there. have a really good At point. At the same time, it's like whether that was rules or no contest like that fight that submission still happened exactly right. it still existed you yeah. know and it was still better than his yeah. so he didn't unless, have yeah unless there was like but a, there's that weird thing it's like because there's no contest it's like that fight never occurred like unless you know? there was a crazy submission in like kentucky in the basement of some guy's house that same night yeah that was submission of the night but that's the thing. It's like, I don't disagree with him losing it. It sucks because I like him as a fighter and stuff. I have no real problem with pot, none of that, you know? So it's like, yeah, you know, but like it's, you know, you know going in. Like he said, you know going in. But see, in. that's a really good response because when you were talking about this to me, whenever it was, last week sometime, <clears throat> I thought to myself, when Nick Diaz was going through all his stuff and even on the Joe Rogan podcast, Dana White continuously says what he said there, like, you know, about the weed. He's like, it shouldn't, like, it's not performance enhanced. People do it. It's awesome. You know, good for them. Whatever. I don't do it. He kept saying, I don't do it, but I don't agree with it. Blah, blah, blah. 
And that was what I was thinking. I was like, okay, so he says all that, yet the commission didn't take the bonuses away. It was the UFC that took the bonuses away. And I was thinking he's contradicting himself. But his explanation there was a perfect explanation to yeah. what I if, if there was a no yeah. contest in that fight, then that fight never, you know, it never happened or whatever, I guess. You know, it's yeah. ridiculous. It's fucked up. I don't know. But, I mean, I get it. White followed by pointing out that the USC is actively working to remove marijuana from the banned substances list, acknowledging that it has become somewhat antiquated and an overblown rule. Nonetheless, at least for the time being, it remains the rule and the fighters are expecting to follow it. And then he also says, It's definitely a culture everywhere now, I would have to say. And this is just my opinion from where I grew up. More people are smoking weed now than ever in the history of in the history of that I can remember. He talks weird. White said in closing, nothing's fair. Life isn't fair. F smoke a bunch of weed at fucking work. See what happens to you. No matter where you work. I don't care where you work, all right? Unless you work at a place that's selling weed, you're going to get in big fucking trouble for smoking it. <laughs> I fucking love that line. Oh, it's fantastic. But yeah, he's right. You know, it's just like, fuck, you know, and not that he did that, you know, but still like, you know, like he's on a situation where he can't be doing that, you know? So. Yeah, that's very true. So that's that story. Now, there's also some shit going on with Vitor Belfort. Do you know, have you heard much about that? Uh, no, I go, I read something, but you say this is a lot of talk about TRT. Right. You know, he's on the TRT, it's known, you know, it's, and he's technically following the rules, so he's not doing anything wrong, but a lot of people have questions, right? right. And a lot of people are like, huh, about this shit. So, he, um, he's in the press conference, right, after the fight. And Which was all, just a performance and a half, it was a good performance. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah he did great, great. yeah, oh, that was probably, it's going to be a highlight real knockout for yeah. years to come, that was an amazing kick, you know, right. and, uh, but I guess nobody was asking in the steroids thing, and I can't remember the guy's name, maybe Rob Thomas, I don't know, but, uh, from uh, Matchbox 20, is that his name, no, <laughs> that's yeah, his name probably too. not him, I don't know, it could be him, that's a common name, bro, I don't know if it's him, anyway, so, some reporter, um, was there, English speaking reporter, because they were in Brazil at the time. And he says, uh, and he said it pretty cool. He wasn't acting, he wasn't calling him out. He's like, you know, he's like, I know, you know, you got this hanging over your head, you know, it must suck that everybody's always asking you about it, blah, blah, blah. He's like, what do you think about whatever? Like, you know, but like he brought up the TRT, and he, but he said it, like, you know, he's Such like, I know people are busting your balls, you know, he's like, he was kind of giving him an out, and I can't give you the exact what he said, but like, he was giving him, like, the way he phrased the question, he could have been like, yeah, you know, he's he was like, feeding I, him what to say. He was, he was feeding him the opportunity yeah. to say the right thing. You right. know what I mean? And he did it. You know what he said? Have you heard about no. this yet? No? He turned around, he goes, hey, can somebody beat that guy up for me? And he starts talking all this shit. He's like, yeah, fuck that guy. He doesn't know what I'm tired of hearing him. He's just talking stupid, blah, blah, blah. He's like, somebody beat him up, right? Wow. And I mean, that's, you know, and what he said, he's like, I never really felt threatened by it. It's not like he was going to come after me. What do you say? But you're in a foreign country. Right. You're in a country that's like very heated that way. And, and apparently some of the media actually kind of cheered what he was saying. Some of the Brazilian media, which a lot of people are like, what the fuck? You know, right. we're all media here. But uh, he's getting a lot of controversy. And, and you know what? I think it was more innocent that he's seen. I don't think he was really trying to get anybody beat up or yeah. anything. I don't think he had any malicious intent. It was just his way but of like, shutting him so up. An American, a North American journalist who's writing about this story and is also a big fan of the UFC and doesn't agree with the TRT, writes that article as, in a, uh, in a fit of... Um, no, he didn't because well, it was money. on camera, right? So I know, but if it. somebody's writing about it in a fit of, you know... Oh, a lot of people rage. criticized it. He kind of had to take it, and he, he like, his thing was, he became the news, because I've heard interviews with him since then, right? And he's like, you know, yeah, he's like, I'm a reporter, I'm not supposed to become the news, but because mm. I asked the question, it kind of became that. Yeah. He's like, and he said, he's like, I don't, ever, I don't think I ever really felt threatened, I was just like, I knew, you know, like, he wasn't really, you know, but, you know, at the same time... You know, and a lot of other people are like, that's just, you know, like, 
why go to a press conference if you don't want to answer questions? Right. And yeah. when you know what the questions are going to be, I had a right. time. And this guy, like you said, gave you the opportunity to say exactly what you needed to say. And he even said... Maybe not like, what you wanted to say, but what you needed to say. When he asked Bell for the question, he's like, you know, he's like, you know, like, it's all over Twitter. Even Joe Rogan said something about it, and I didn't look to see what Joe Rogan said. But the problem now is, because that was a great performance, and people are talking about him as the next shot for the title for, right. against uh, Anderson Silva. Um... Dana White being one of those people. Yeah, but if he ta- if that fight happens and say he wins, now your champion in the middleweight division can only fight in certain places because he can't get licensed in Nevada right now. Right. Because he's failed the drug test before, so they're not going to give him a TRT exemption based on the fact that he's failed the drug test. That's right. that their policy, right? So he's ineligible for a test. To, or for uh, TRT exemption there, right? So he can't be taking it. There. So it's like, is all his fights going to be in fucking Brazil? Well, he's you in know? Nevada. He's not commissioned. But like, what if they went to Montreal? He might be in Montreal. He might be in. I'm Chicago. not sure. Yeah, but like, th- that's the thing. It's like there are a couple that he can do. There's a lot that he can't. Yeah. Right. So it's like, well, then, do you want a champion that you can only have fight certain places? Uh, and like, GSP. <laughs> <laughs> but, Dana, but, but Dana White said specifically last after in the last press conference after that fight yeah. with uh, Diaz yeah. Yeah. that he wants GSP's next fight to be in Nevada, like just because he is aware that most of his fights have been in Montreal yeah. for a long time, you know. So, and what's in the what's in the cards for him? Like any what's going on with him? GSP? What's he is he fighting? Is he where? Who's he fighting? Johnny Edricks seems to be the contender. Seems to be, but like no idea. They haven't signed it right now. No, he nothing's signed at all. So I have no idea. Like they haven't announced anything, mm-hmm. right? so there's nothing to say there. But yeah, I hope Hendricks get that shot. I hope so too. That what a fight that would be. I think. It could end up being your average GSB fight for all I know. Let. It could be, but... I just think he's got that chance. Just the chance, but he's got, got that chance. chance. You know? Yeah, I don't know if he has a great chance, but he's got a chance. <laughs> he's, got a chance. He's, he's good on his back, is he not? I don't know what I'm he's like on sure his he back. He's, he's a wrestler. He's a wrestler, but like wrestlers aren't always good off their back. No, you know? but he's Brazilian got good guys. power too, so he must know how to punch a little bit. That's back. the thing that he's got the advantage, is if he can get that shot in early, right? Like, But can he, you know? I think he's got enough in him to stop the first couple takedowns. I still don't think he'll be able to stop all his takedowns. I mean, it's just not going to happen. It's GSP. But if you can stop the first couple, at least to give yourself a chance to set up a shot, who knows? So. What happens if you were fast? I would like to see somebody to stop a takedown by jumping over him. It was like, oh, like a video. <laughs> so like a leapfrog? Yeah, like leapfrog. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> Just keep doing that. Oh, man. So 160 is coming up. Yeah. And, uh, main events. Bigfoot Silva versus Cain Velasquez. Okay, I gotta ask you something about Bigfoot yeah. Silva. He's an ugly man. Do you yeah. remember the movie, I think it was called The Giant, or something about a giant and Billy Crystal, and there was that guy, and this same actor was in uh, a movie called Big Fish, who played a giant. He's got that um, disease, it's not giant. Are you talking about Andre the Giant? No, not shut up. Not Gigantor, it's not Gigantor disease, but Gigant... To more, I don't know what it is. It's a disease. Uh, where you, I know the name. Um, you continuously grow, and your bones and your face looks megalo or something. It's I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and no. you never stop growing. Okay. That's that's what uh, megalo sounds like a cereal. I don't know, but or macro or something. Macro. Macro. Yeah, because micro and macro. That's what it is. All right. Not megalo. I don't know what the fuck mega. You just think induce megalo, but <laughs> he looks a lot like that actor. Looks a lot like Bigfoot. Does Bigfoot have that disease? Not that I'm aware of. Oh, he's not really mad. He is. I give him that. So, Anyways. yeah, he gets the next shot because he took, he ended up getting the best of Wolverine thanks to Wolverine being cocky. More than likely, he's going to get beat up again. Doesn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, co main event, which is for me my main event. It's a fight I want to see. Mark Hunt versus Junior Dos Santos. Right. 
Now, have you heard about the bullshit going on with this fight? Yeah, you told yeah, me about that too. The, him trying to get a license? Yeah. Did they end or up not get a license, just get into the country, right? Did, did he end they up? They figured it out. All right. Yeah, so he's fighting. He's in wherever, Vegas? Is it I Vegas? think so. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it's definitely Vegas because I heard somebody talking about it yesterday. So, yeah, that's going to happen. Now, I don't know. I want Hunt to win. Hunt's a feel good story for me, man. Fucking, I like the guy. He just seems to be a cool dude. So I would love to see him win. I don't know that he's going to. I think Junior's faster than him. I think Junior's just as powerful, you know. But this guy can take a punch like nobody's business, man. He'll just be like, he's just the guy that you just bomb, bomb on him and he just keeps on coming like a fucking robot. So if he can, like, weather the storm and, like, you know, get in there and do whatever he's got to do, I don't know. He was joking. I was watching the preview. <laughs> and he was saying about Junior Santos because Junior Santos is a stand-up fighter primarily, yeah. right? Yeah. But he knows jiu-jitsu and shit. I think he's got either at least a brown belt, you know? Um, maybe a black belt. But uh, everybody's like, well, you, you think he's going to take you down? And he's like, I don't know. He's like, you know, he's not... He's, he's usually a stand-up fighter. He's like... But I think when I hit him a couple of times, he's probably going to want to take me yeah. down. I mean, I would. <laughs> he's just, I'm just like, you're fucking awesome. But, uh, yeah, so they're going to be fighting, and I think that's going to be a fucking wicked fight, man. And, like, if he wins, man, like, if he finds a way to win that fight, like, fucking, I want him to get it. They're not talking. They're saying if Junior wins that fight... He gets another shot. Yeah, and but they don't necessarily... They, they didn't say no about Hunt, but they didn't say yes. They were just, you know... So I think if he does win, he has to win impressively somehow. But I think beating a former champion like Junior, like you know, I mean, that's impressive to me. Yeah, you yeah. know, like, like if you're good, the only way you can, I shouldn't say the only way, but when you're the underdog like that in a fight like that, the only, when you beat them, it's gonna it's gonna have to be impressive. Like you know what I mean? You're gonna have to lay a beat on. Yeah, and I don't think he can beat Cain Velasquez. I'll be honest. Like I just don't think he can beat Cain Velasquez, but. I just want to see him get the shot, you know? Like, I just think that would be a great fight. And then you got to ask yourself, <laughs> Bigfoot Silva, if he finds a way, because, I mean, you know, like, with the heavyweight division, every fucking champion, the belt, I don't think anybody's even defended it three times in a row. Or I think three times in a row is the For those most. of you listening right now, <laughs> Steve <laughs> literally just put up three fingers and pushed them as far across the table as he possibly did that. Yeah. Three. I had to make sure it was fucking there, you know? Like, but yeah, that belt does not like stay with one person. No. There's no dominant champions in the name because everybody's got such heavy hands that it all it takes is one fucking shot and then they're down. So who's to say that Kane's not going to have that shot landed on him, you know? Like, more than likely, it's not going to happen. But all of a sudden, if he wins, like Bigfoot, somehow finds a way to knock him out. And then all of a sudden, Mark Hunt wins somehow, yeah. right? Then you got Mark Hunt versus Bigfoot Silva. Like, two heavy-handed, just slug-it-out kind of guys so going for the belt. Like, but that they, would be amazing to me. Like And I think then, it's like, you know what? Hunt's got the better chance now, you well, know? Well, Bigfoot's like, much taller than him, isn't he? He is, yeah. Uh, I don't know how much he is. I don't know, like, a couple inches, probably. But, yeah, he's a bigger guy. But, uh, I mean, Stefan Struve was a lot bigger than him. And he knocked yeah, him he was goofy. Jaw. He was goofy looking. <laughs> he was. He didn't look like he should be fighting. He yeah, just, and he looked kind of cocky. He, he cocky. kept trying to get him into his guard and stuff. And he was just like, no, nah, fuck that, get up. He looks like somebody took a straw and stuck it up. What's his name? Rory McDonald? Yeah, Stuck yeah, it yeah. up his ass and just blew. I heard an interview with him on I remember Hawani's show. And uh, it was pretty funny. It was like the most natural he's ever been. You know, he was just kind of relaxed. You could tell he's starting to kind of get used to doing interviews and shit. And I think he was saying, too, he's like, it depends on who I'm doing interviews with, too, now. He's like, I kind of know, like he was talking about Arrow. He's like, I know you're knowledgeable and you're mm. not an idiot. You're educated, you know? So you make more sense to talk to than some average person. And then he mentioned that he had a girlfriend that he's had since before he started, like, he got into the UFC. Which made me wonder, because I remember that one uh, pre-show, like the hype show, and it was him and that other dude, uh, who's that other Montreal guy? The one that yeah, won the Montreal fighter. The guy, yeah. uh, I just had his name. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, whoever the fuck he is. It doesn't even matter. But... Uh, <laughs> 
Remember they were sitting in his apartment or whatever, there was a couple chicks over yeah. and shit, and they're trying to make him look like serious playboys and stuff, and I'm just like, that's pretty fucking funny, you know? Yeah. You'll see what... Yeah, you know, look at these two suave young gentlemen that are like getting all the girls. It's like, no, that's his girlfriend. Like, I don't know if that was his <laughs> yeah. girlfriend. Well, that could have been a fucking actor for all I know. But I mean, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But I mean, she's been around forever. It's not like he's like, oh, I'm a playboy, ever, I'm a USC playboy, I'm Ric Flair. This is a little off, but you ever hear of the show Keys to the VIP? I've heard of it. It was on much. Uh, it was on uh, MTV Canada, and they just put two guys head to head with earpieces into a club and these four guys five got four guys on a panel would give them challenges okay, okay? I heard this. so a, a guy I know used to be a good buddy I'd say a decent buddy uh, was on it and so they do the little video montage before and his his didn't have girls but there were ones where it'd just be like girls laying down and buddies you know trying to be like this playboy but this guy's was like He's like, oh, and this is my book collection from university and blah, blah, blah. And then this is my this and this is my that. But what they failed to say is that this room is in the basement of my mom's house. You know what I mean? <laughs> but sort of similar to setting up with Rory McDonald in his thing. But I thought that was fun. Just making it look good, yeah. Yeah, this is my university collection. And it wasn't even like a big library bookcase. Like it was, you know, something you'd have your alarm clock on next to the bed. <laughs> with books in it. Look at all this. <laughs> Look at these 20 books. I'm a fucking superstar. Yeah, that was the OC. Uh, who else is fighting? Don Cerrone's fighting somebody. Uh, fuck, I can't remember the name. But whoever it is, it's somebody good, and it's going to be a good fight. We're not the best at recapping this stuff or previewing. This I don't stuff. even know who's fighting. I don't even know who Jim Brown uh, is. Gray Maynard's fighting uh, T.J. Grant, who I yeah. don't know a lot about T.J. Grant, but apparently he's a young up and cover that fights pretty hard and stuff like that. So that could be a really good fight. Um, I don't know what else. I think Vanderlei and Chael are going to happen. Really? Yeah. That'd be awesome. Um, I guess Fox is starting Fox Sports 1 or something like that. It's called. Like a brand new channel yeah. that covers all the sports. It's all sports all the time, whatever. Um, so the debut day of this channel starting, they're going to have a live fight card that night. And they haven't announced what the card is, but a lot of people are saying it's going to be that. So, and I can't remember. I think they said August something. Now, do you think there is... Or ever will be, because I think it's a good idea. So say Fox News one, not Fox, Sport, Fox Sports one, yeah. whatever you just said. So say you got a, any fight, like pick a really amazing fight that's going to attract a lot of people to watch it. Say GSP and Anderson Silva. Yeah. Okay, that wouldn't be on free TV. But say it's a fight on free TV. Do you think that they grease the? fighters any bit to be like hey you should sign that contract with the UFC and here's some money because you're going to make us a shitload of money who are you talking about Fox any TV show any wanting to get fighters yeah get, no not not yes get fighters but grease them up a little like pay them on top of what the UFC is paying them because this fight potentially can make them a lot of money oh if they wanted to put something really big on TV right or even something small, it doesn't matter what, you know what I mean? Say Chael and uh, Vanderlei fight on this Fox thing. Do you think they had or could have any input financially into why that fight's happening? Here, here, you sign this, Vanderlei, sign See, this. See, that's hard because I know champions and stuff in big fights, um, and these guys aren't that, but uh, they get obviously like a portion of uh, pay-per-view over right. a certain number and stuff like that, right? So if they draw big, they get money, you know? So stuff like that. But, like, how do you measure that when it's television, you know? Because all they're doing, the only money they're bringing in is advertising revenue, right. right? Ratings. You do it by ratings. The more ratings, the more you can charge for advertising. Yeah, I guess you can do If this that. happens, you know, if it happens once a month kind of thing, and, you know, uh, Nike or whoever sees, hey, there's millions of people watching at this time on this channel. Yeah, it could happen. Yeah, something like that. And like you said about ratings, I guess they can do that. If the ratings go over above certain thing. But then it would have to be like we pay you a flat amount. They're not going to pay them like a percentage of the Oh, no, that's right. But, you know, here's $50,000. If, you, if you can break this, then, you yeah. know. Say Vandalay's like, oh, I don't want to fight Chael. I don't want to fight Chael. No, they both want to fight. They're okay. But and it's funny. I heard 
uh, Vanderlei in an interview last night on the MMA report on TSN, which uh, featured one of uh, my questions, which has been going on for about the last three weeks. MMA report, you can find it on iTunes with John Pollock. It's uh, what's been going on two or three weeks. Your question, yeah, because he has a thing where you put your questions on Twitter and you say ask Pollock, right? And uh, you, there's a hashtag, so I'll put on certain questions. And like, I think the last three weeks in a row, my questions have been read, really. Yeah, nice. I'm gonna start, doing and that. it's like yesterday, my questions opened, really. Yeah, and he talked about what I because I said, uh, does he say like he says Steve, Steve Justin? No, no, he doesn't give my full thing, he just says Steve. Which is fine, because I don't know if I want my full yeah, yeah, name yeah. on there anyway. But uh, the last one was like, why don't athletes like ad- like admit to aging or whatever, you know? Like, why, don't, why can't they accept that they age, you know? Like, it's just like, if you, if you don't have enough fucking testosterone or whatever in your system, then maybe you just shouldn't be fighting, you know? So Joe Rogan him, said that in his podcast, too. Oh, really? Yeah, but he didn't say Steve. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I just was like... And he kind of addressed it and was just like, yeah, he's like, you're right. But like, at the same time, these guys see money. And I'm like, of course, I like, I understand that. You know, there was a reason they're doing all this is because they want to stay in the game to make cash, right? But, like Vitor, he's 35 years old, you know, yeah. like, and I'm not saying that's the end of your career. Like you could have, you know, a good run for the next five years or something like that. But. Well, look at uh, Randy Couture. What was uh-huh. he, 42, his last fight? Yeah, but he was an anomaly, I think. Or he wasn't getting tested the same way as they are now. <laughs> you know, you never know. You got to think back to that now, you know. How come his testosterone was okay all those years? I heard on uh, Moro Ronaldo, you know who that is? Nope. Moro Ronaldo, he used to do, uh, he used to work yes. on uh, Score. Oh, no. Score Fighting Series? No. Nope. He was like an announcer there. Nope. Um, I think it was Score Fighting Series. Anyway, he does, he does boxing announcements. He used to announce for Pride, actually. Um, he does boxing right now, but he's done a lot of different MMA. He's even done some pro wrestling and stuff like that. But anyway, he's got his own podcast, this new thing called The Show. And it's long. He goes through everything. Boxing. He gets boxers on there. He had George Foreman on there or whatever. But he took this, like, sound bite. And I don't know if it was from a full podcast, because I don't listen to all of them. They're, like, three hours long, man. I just skip through certain parts, right? But he had this guy on Jakar or something. And I guess he's, like, a retired fighter. Um... And his doctor had said to him, you need TRT. And it wasn't because of fighting. It wasn't, you know, so, so he had gone on TRT. But he, he wasn't doing any crazy working out or anything. And he, th- and he said, it was the sound bite. It was just like this four-minute conversation, right? And he's like, I just wasn't feeling like it was changing anything. <clears throat> so he's like, I went off it. Because it's not like I wasn't fighting. It wasn't like, you know. And, and then my wife kept saying, you know, you got to get back on that stuff. You got to get back on. He's like, why? I'm fine. You know, I don't feel any different when I take that stuff. She's like, yeah, but you just lay around on the couch. You're lazy. You got to get up and do stuff, right? So he's like, okay, well, I'll get back on it. But this time, if I'm going to get back on, I want to do some working out and see, you know? He's like, so I started taking it and I go to the gym and holy, and, and like, this guy's not a young guy. He's like in his like at least late thirties or something, right? So he's like, yeah, I think he's even older than that. Actually, I think he was like, it was early forties. But he's like, yeah, I'm working out. I feel fucking great. I'm great. I'm going crazy, you know. I'm doing all this stuff, and I go home, and I'm like, yeah, that was fun, you know. Like, and the next day, I wake up, and it's like I just go and I do it all again. He's like, and I don't feel sore. He's like, I haven't worked out in a long time. He's like, this didn't happen to me when I was in my twenties. Right. He's like, this shouldn't be. And he says, he's like, this shouldn't be happening to me. He's like, they need to look into this stuff. This is not right. Like, this is. He's like, I wasn't like this in my prime. I didn't feel like this in my prime. There's no way this is okay. Yeah. You know, so, and he was just a guy that was like, I did it because, like, because my testosterone was legitimately low, you know? But yeah, like, that says a lot to me, yeah. you know? Because, I mean, he he's not, he has no vested interest. There's no reason for him to say he's not making money off saying this, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like he's, you know, he's not even competing. He's just like, you know what? I think this is fucked up, you know? There's something to look at, so... I would love that though, eh? Get some of that. I'm not a fighter. I can take whatever I want. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, you ever watch the Tyson documentary? Uh uh-uh. uh. I want to, but you no, gotta I get haven't. your hands on that somehow. Netflix. Is it's on, on Netflix? It used to be. I don't know if it still is. That's something else. That's a really good interview. Yeah, you that, told me about it. Yeah, it makes um, Tyson look more human. Because before, you know, years ago, 
He, the people didn't think he was human. And then it shows his backstory, just everything. It's a fantastic documentary. A lot of people say that, like, create, like saved his career, like, at least saved his, like, profile. Yeah, his public, profile. You know? Because he was, like, after, like, coming out of jail and all that other shit and biting the ear off, he was yeah. just looking at a crazy rapist, yeah. you know? And that's exactly right. Then no. he had a show where he had pigeons. He collected pigeons. Not collected. You don't collect that unless you're a cat lady. But he had pigeons, and they just come back. They'd go off wherever, and they'd come back. And he, the show was his life, and it didn't last long. Look at uh, me and these pigeons. <laughs> yeah, and that's pretty much what it was. I love my pigeons. The 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 the. the. <laughs> if I love my pigeons. I'll fuck you up. Yeah, but he was uh, this dark man was really good. But yeah, it t talks about like I said his childhood. It talks about everything about him. It's a good documentary. You should get your hands on it. Watch it. Yeah, I've been wanting me to. I don't know why I haven't. Because I don't watch much TV. That's why I haven't. Well, it's not on much TV. It's probably on Netflix though. Yeah. Bump. Bump. What the fuck's bump? Bump. But I'm bump. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're ending a joke. I was ending a joke with a but I'm bump. And I just fucked it up. <laughs> what the fuck was that? What else is going on? John Cholish. Do you know who that name is? No. Nope. No? Well, he's a UFC fighter. Didn't do anything too crazy. But he retired. He fought a couple weeks ago, like within the last two or three cards. And he decided to retire after the fight. I think he lost. I'm not sure. Um, but he went on the MMA thing. And he was going on about fighter salaries. And... Uh, He's like, yeah, he's like, I get paid like 8000 to fight, eight to win, right? I'm like, and this guy, like, he comes from some kind of financial background. Like, yeah. he's got an outside job. And apparently he's like, he's like, you know, he's like, I don't want to get into my outside job. I don't want any questions about that. That's my life, blah, blah, blah. He's like, but I'll tell you this, I do all right. You know, he's yeah. like, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm very comfortable, you know? So, like, the guy's successful in whatever he does. And he works in finance. So, I mean, he's got money. He's like, I do this because I like to. And they're like, well, why do you want to go to the UFC so bad? The Ariel Wani was asking. He's like, well, because that's where the best are. You know, right. he's like, if I want to compete against the best and test myself against the best, that's where it is, you know? So he talks about it. He's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, there's, there's times where I break about even, and, and but there's a lot of times where I end up losing, right? And he's like, he's where, because he's like, you know, he's like, I'm not going to shortchange the guys that help me up. Right. Like, like get there you know he's like I gotta pay for a camp I gotta pay for this I gotta pay for that um you see say you go to cause yeah it was he was at the Brazil card <laughs> and uh he's like they, the UFC is only willing to pay for I think one person as a cornerman right to like airfare yeah. and accommodations right so he's like but you know you have like four cornermen at least I think that I think that's what it is four four or five um He's like, so I ended up, you know, I'm not going to make these guys foot the bill to help me out. So I ended up footing the bill to get them there, you know, so, and put them up, you know. So right. now I got to pay for like three guys in their hotels and blah, 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 and airfare and all that. And he's like, you know, and then I got to pay for their camps and I got to do this. And you know, guys that come in and to training yeah. camp yeah. and work with me, I, you know, pay. He's like, yeah, he's like, a lot of times I come out, I end up losing about, you know, three to five thousand dollars, you know. And he's like, for me, that's not a big deal. Like, it sucks, but it's not a big deal because I'm doing all right, right. with my other shit. For but, other fighters. Yeah, and that's what he's saying. He's like, you know, he's like, I think, really, you should be making enough that win or lose, you can live for the next three months plus pay the people that helped you get there, you yeah. know? And he, he talked a lot about, like, fighter salaries. So, like, he's like, for me, it's not a big deal. And he's like, and I'm not stopping because I'm like, oh, it's not fair. He's just like, it's not worth it to me. To, yeah. You know, I'm not into it enough to take a loss, that much loss every time, you know? And he's like, it's not every time. He's like, I break even sometimes. And, you know, there's the odd time where I make a bit of money. But it's not, you know, that he's like, I know that there's guys, like, I have something on the side. that I know there's guys that live off this, you know? And he's like, that's fucked up, man. Like, See, and that's what, you know... He's like, there's um, times where it's like six, six to win, or six to fight, six to win. Yeah, uh, and on the other end of the continuum is uh, Nick Diaz saying the same thing, but being broke while saying it, right? Yeah, but he's making fucking way more than these average dudes. Yeah, that's and like, because that's what he's talking about. He's like, you know, he's like, obviously, <laughs> guys that are like at the top, they're making great money. He's like, they're they're fine. You don't have to worry about them, you know. But they had to get there, you know. So at one point, they know, you know, like they they. Yeah, the guys that are coming up only make this much, you know? <laughs> but I just thought, you know, it's like, yeah, I'd like, 
I didn't think they made a ton of money, but yeah, I thought they would at least make enough that they would be able to like pay their shit and like <clears throat> live for a little bit, you know? Because you got you got at least what three months between fights, barring injuries, you know? If you if you're good, like if you're good, well, enough. well, not even about being good enough. Win or lose, like as long as you don't get fucked up too bad, where you got to take time off, like you know, like usually it's like roughly, you know, because the guys like to fight about three times, three to four times a year if they can, right? But I mean, lots of times that ends up being different because of injuries, right? And like, you get a certain amount from sponsors, but like up and comer guys, they don't get that many sponsors. And the sponsors they do that, they don't give them the kind of money that they give GSP, you know? No, that's right. Chuck and Charlie's chicken wings. Uh-huh. Or they'll get like Jocko and all that yeah. shit, but it's like, well, we'll give you a couple grand, you know? It's like, well, a couple grand is a lot more than I had a minute ago. So, right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, that's fucked up. I don't know. Anyway, that's my UFC talk. It's UFC. So, we might as well sign this off because I think we're both dying. Yeah. We're not what, dying, but winding down and we don't need to keep going any more than we need to. Well, nope, that's right. It's a quarter after one in the morning. Is it really? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to try to get this up for the next 24 hours. I believe you said that the last one. Yeah. yeah the last one's going up next. <laughs> <laughs> the last one's like a banked episode. But this one, I don't have to do too much with it because I don't think I have to cut a bunch of shit out. So I'll just like put it on as is. Throw an intro and be done. And an outro. Yeah, I got in trouble for that last time. Or No. Yeah, man, fucking, uh, because I put that Black Rebel Motorcycle Club on, and I got an email from YouTube, because I played quite a bit of that song, a lot of times I'll only play, like, maybe, a, not even a minute or so of, yeah. the, of the song, Yeah. but I like that song, and I kind of just discovered that band, so uh, I played, like, a good minute and a half of that song, and I guess they have scanner things that check that shit, and it's like... Just want to let you know we're aware that you played something that was like copyrighted to like EMI music or whatever, you know. We're not going to take it off this time, but just, you know, be aware that we're, we pay attention, you know. Yeah. So, it's like, oh, so okay. how is it uh, things like um, It's Time? Like, It's Time, he's got to have the rights to that. Not the UFC, he's yeah. the got the rights to that. But see how, I think they don't recognize it because you know how I, because our intro is like me taking what, that yeah, yeah, yeah. plus like two, Three different songs. Three different songs. Yeah. And They'll recognize it now that we're together. talking about it, but yeah. I don't think they're listening, <laughs> listening, you know? Like, they just have things that pick up on certain patterns or whatever, right? But yeah. Anyway, you can follow us on Twitter at... Well, we just got a new Twitter handle called yeah, us there. Chill Time Pod. At Chill Time Pod. We also have our own Twitter handles, which is... Uh, at Steve Jessum, J E S S O M E, and at Chris Hickey, H I C K E Y seven O seven seven zero seven zero seven whatever. <laughs> not whatever. I say seven O seven because that's yeah. what I say. But yeah. when you're typing it, that's not what it is. You know. And if you uh, want to check out our Facebook page, at Chill Time with Steve and Chris, like that. And we also, I have a YouTube channel i think it's the steve jessam i'm not really sure how that works i guess you can just look if you're listening to it on youtube right now you yeah you like right well there. if you find this podcast you can just subscribe to the thing and you'll get more of it so as they come available which isn't crazy often but uh we're like that <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're like yeah yeah as more people start listening if more people start listening, then we'll kind of take more responsibility. But right now, we're just kind of winging it. So anyway, those are all our uh, contact information. Um, this was Steve. Chill time with Steve and Chris. I'm Steve. I'm Chris. And There's we'll a steel later. train coming in. I would take it if I could, and I would not lie to you because Sunday morning soon will come. Things will be easier to say Upon the microphone like I'm a boss DJ I won't walk up upon the stage like it was dry land A boss DJ ain't nothing but a man No trouble, no fuss, I know why It's so nice I wanna hear the same song twice 
All the songs on the radio, they all drive me crazy. 